Okay, so in today's math lesson, uh, what we're doing here is we're taking diagrams and we're making expressions out of them. We're also comparing and looking at expressions, and we're also evaluating expressions. So a lot, a lot going on today. Uh, I notice in our first, one, first problem here, we need to find out the value of q. Uh, but first, they want me to make an expression to, to find that out. And I notice that we have four, four boxes, and the question mark represents one of those four boxes. So I need to find one quarter. That's what that means, one out of the four of a total, and the total is written up here, 17 plus 4. Now I can add these now, but they want the initial expression, so I'm going to leave it just as it's written, 17 plus 4. And there's my expression for how to solve for that question mark. Now I can go about adding things up. In the parentheses, I have to take care of that stuff first. So the 17 plus 4, there's my 21. So 17 plus 4 equals 21 times 1 quarter, and that's going to equal 21 firsts divided by 4, gives me 21 divided by 4, and on the side I'll take to my 21, I'll divide it by 4, I'll get 5, there's a 20, I get 1 left, out of 4, and there's my answer, 5 and a quarter. Okay? Now if I was to plug in 5 and a quarter, just to check things out, into each of these, just to check to make sure I'm doing everything right, I should get a total of 21. And here, if I added my whole numbers, 5, 10, 15, 20, that works out pretty well. Plus my four quarters, 1, quarter, 2, quarter, 3, quarter, 4, quarter. That gives me one whole. And there's my 21. Okay? So far, so good. Let me clear the board. Let's talk now. The next problem, there's a little bit of a clerical error here. That 1 doesn't belong. It's really 6 times 3 eighths. And what we need to do here is find some expressions that equal that. The first one that glares at me right away is this guy right here. According to the commutative property, if I switch the order in a multiplication problem, the product's, product is always the same. So if I'm multiplying 6 times 3 8 or 3 8 times 6, I'm circling this guy because those products will be equal. And they want me to explain. Well, this one's pretty simple. Commutative property. Okay. Commutative property. Now, some of these don't work at all. Uh, well, let's see if we can pick one of these out. Uh, how about this guy right here? 8 divided by 6 times 3. Well, according to this problem here, I'm going to have to multiply these two and then divide by this 8. Well, this thing's asking me to divide the 8 with the 6 and then multiply it by 3. So the order is all out of whack. None of this is going to work. So this isn't going to work because I need to... Divide by 8. Okay, not take 8 and divide it by 6. So that's not going to work. And then they go through some of the other ones, and, and for all kinds of reasons, they either work or they don't work. All right? So that's how you solve those types of problems. There, clear the board. This is the fun stuff. These are the things I really like. Write an expression to match uh, some of these words, what they give you here. So, and the first one here, it asks for, give me the one-eighth of the sum of 23 and 17. One-eighth the sum of 23 and 17. Well, the sum means to add. And if I'm going to take one-eighth of something, that means to multiply. So I need to take one-eighth of the sum of 23 and 17. So here's my 23 and 17. And there's my setup. Okay? Now I need to add these guys together. So my 23 and my 17, and on the side, I could do that if I wanted to. Or you can just add it in your head if you think you're that good. Here's my 40. Okay, and I need to take 1 eighth of that. And this is going to equal 40 times 1 divided by 8, or 40 divided by 8, which gives me a total of 5. Okay, and that's really how it works out here. Uh, some of these are kind of fun here, like this guy here. Seven copies of the sum of eight fifths and four. I need to take eight fifths, add four, and take and then make seven copies of that, which means multiply it by a whole number of seven, and then you can evaluate that one. That's kind of cool. These are kind of neat. Fifteen times, fifteen times as much as one fifth of twelve. So 15 times as much of one-fifth 
of 12, kind of neat. So 15 times as much as 1 fifth of 12. So uh, pretty neat stuff. Lots of evaluating, lots of work to do in here, um, but great. Okay, folks? So those are the kinds of things. Oh, one more thing we did today. Let me uh, clear this board. Oh, we did some uh, comparing here, which is kind of neat, too. Greater than, less than stuff, which is kind of fun. Uh, I'm noticing here, what I tend to do is look for things that are the same on either side here. I'm noticing that I'm taking two-thirds and I'm multiplying that by something. Here I'm multiplying it by 15. Here I'm multiplying it by something that's more than 15. Well, that gives it away. This side here, the left side, is going to be greater than. Uh, simply because I'm multiplying by something that's greater than 15. Um, and they really don't want you to calculate. So this can be a little bit tough, but um, still a lot of fun. So good luck. Hopefully I helped. Take care. So long.